Hello and welcome to Puttering Outdoors. As you can tell by the intro, we're going to be working on the trailer again. It's going to be a very simple project today, um, nothing too spectacular, but just something that I've been wanting to get done for a while now. What's going on is that the hitch itself, um, this part here, um, is made out of uh, metal that I found out in the backyard. I think it was part of a um, uh, stationary bike exercise bike because uh, I don't know there was pedals attached to it and all but it was only parts of the device I have no idea what it was but I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was and you can tell too by the particle thing that's on it and this metal here is not that strong so if there's any kind of load in the trailer this will start bending up and I always got to clamp it down and bend it back down again as you can see I mean I can bend that with my fingers no problem so what I want to do is I want to take some uh, two inch wide by quarter inch thick flat stock and I want to you know mount it the same way here but it'll be much uh, wider um, but I'm gonna put a piece of metal to basically create an I-beam uh, which will make this a lot stronger as well I mean I just thought of this maybe yesterday or the day before I've been using this uh, makeshift pin that I made out of a nail and uh, you know to put in the quarter pin and all that it's uh, quite annoying and I do have some uh, linchpins here that I could use for this, which would be a lot faster and probably stronger too. Uh, not that this has ever failed, but um, yeah, since I have them here, uh, might as well use them and uh, make this trailer a little bit more usable and uh, a little bit sturdier. Uh, so let's get to it. So this is the lock pin set that I have. Got this at Princess Auto. Um, I don't know what size will fit on the tractor. I want to be able to still use the garden tractor to uh, lug around this trailer. Sometimes we don't need to use the, the big Kubota. Uh, we could just use a little garden tractor. So I'm going to go check to see what um, pin size fits in the, the receiver on the garden tractor. And that will decide um, some of the other implementations that I can do. Because I might make the hole bigger. Um, for where it actually uh, on the receiver on the trailer receiver itself uh, so let's go take a walk to the to the pop-up garage to see what size i need okay it's a little dark in here um i took uh, the biggest size i got which is a 3 8 and uh, it fits in the hole no problem so i think we'll go with the 3 8 size yeah seems like a good plan so let's go with that and um i gotta take another measurement because what I want to do, like I said, I want to create like an I-beam. And I want to make sure that when I turn at the maximum angle, that there's clearance between this hole and the um, the part of the I-beam. Um, so it doesn't bind against this too early. So I'm just going to take that measurement now. And based on, you know, where the tire is, I can tell approximately what angle it's going to be at the maximum angle. Which would be, if I go to the center of the hole... I said probably around there, which is 32 millimeters. Can you guys remember that for me? 32 millimeters. Thanks. Okay, this is the underneath of the tongue that um, you know where that, that bolts the 
the makeshift hitch that I made. I put this block of wood so that if ever this hit the ground, it would not uh, screw up the threads. Uh, so I just got to remove this right now. And then I just need to find a socket and a hex to uh, remove these two. I'm going to use these as a template, as a template uh, where to drill the holes and how far to, away to drill the holes from the, the tip of the tongue here, I guess. I want to take these off so I can use these as a template. Forgot that I had put some uh, nylon lock washers or lock nuts on there. There you go. Over to the workbench. Okay, so first I gotta cut the same length, which is six and three quarters. Yeah, let's say six and three quarters. So let's cut let's cut two of these for uh, to six and three quarters. Because of the angle, I could turn the vise. Let me try to turn the vise. <laughs> Let's see if we can't get this cut. Had to go get safety glasses. Now let's cut the other one. That was great. I could have taken it, this out and put it into its uh, into its stand that you know acts like a. A miter saw, but um, I'm gonna have to do some fine cuts there a little bit later because I wanna I'm gonna want to make this into round edges, so I would have had to put it back in here. So I just thought it'd probably be easier to just do this for now. So now I gotta drill the two holes that go um, that attaches this to the tongue of the trailer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld these two together, like just spot weld them. So when I drill the hole, it'll drill right through both at the exact same spot. So that way they're, you know, they'll be aligned. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld these. Creates bit. Came out pretty good. Now I gotta measure out um, the hole for the actual um, hitch pin. And what kind of size hole I need to drill. Okay, so the pin is 3 eighths. Um, I'm gonna make a half inch hole um, in here in order for it to receive the pin. And the reason why I'm going oversized like that is that if ever the trailer tends to, to go up or down a little bit like that, it'll have some, some room to play. Whereas if it's too exact, it'll, it won't have any play at all and they might put too much pressure on the pin or on the hitch or on the tongue or whatever. It, it, it would, something would give. So might as well make the hole bigger so it has room to travel um, laterally, vertically, whatever, you know, like this. And then um, that way there will avoid uh, problems down the line. Uh, let me go ahead and drill a hole half inch in here to receive this pin.
Okay, now I'm gonna, I guess, cut a, cut a notch in the corners here so that um, it, it won't bind when it turns this way, like that. Um, so it'll have some clearance. I'm gonna try to make it like a circle, but I doubt that I can with the bandsaw. But, you know, I'll still cut it on an angle just so we can, you know, have some clearance there. I'll just go round it off now on the bench grinder. I just made a mark so I could remember which side belongs to which, so when I put them together, I know which way they go. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna have the piece of metal that I'm gonna create as a fillet, gusset, <laughs> something anyways, to create the I-beam um, <laughs> out of these two, like this. I want to have a piece of metal basically that goes like this and creates an I-beam which will make this so much sturdier. It's good. I mean, just this quarter inch stock is, I'm sure, is thick enough to hold whatever weight I can put in that trailer. But you know, I'm out here, I'm having fun, <laughs> might as well do it, right? Um, so yeah, I gotta cut a piece of metal that's well, you know, one and a half inch thick because, you know, that's uh, the thickness of a two by six. And uh, I need it 32 millimeters long. Um, so I have the 32 millimeters clearance that we measured on the tractor over there. And I measured the um, hitch on the this tractor as well. And it's about the same. So um, let me go ahead and cut that over engineering things. My piece is not straight, not even close. Okay, I cut my piece. Uh, one and a half inches thick, 32 inches wide. Uh, so now it's just a matter of welding it to both pieces here. Might be hard to do, it's gonna be a challenge, but I'm up for the challenge. Just measuring, making sure it's in the center. The hard part is going to be welding the top one on. Not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but I'll figure it out. All the holes line up, seem straight, straight as can be anyways. Got another idea. What I did is I, at first, I put a piece of two by four in between here, cause I mean, that's one and a half inches wide and I clamped it down. But this end was open quite a bit wider than this end here. So I had to loosen this up. So this is loose now. And then I uh, clamped this down so we'd have the same distance here as here and um if you take the calipers and look very loose there and very loose there it's about the same i might be like half a millimeters um off and all i gotta do now is square it up and then i can weld one side and i'll be able to weld the other side or tack it anyways and then weld the other side i just gotta make sure it's square now because um it looks like it's uh, a little wobbly so that means it's out of square 
So I should be able to just tap this down a little bit and uh, should be good to go. Water sheds in there. <laughs> That's the way I operate. And I also clamped it from front to back to make sure that it's parallel, I guess. No wobbles. I think I might be good to go here. Measure this again. It's flaring out a little bit like that at the bottom. I'm gonna have to call that good and just weld it like that. I think it'll do. Nice and solid, that's for sure. Still a little bit hot, but let's see if it fits on here. Oh, oops, sorry. With a little bit of a um, hammer action, it should fit on there pretty good. It's already nice and tight, that's good. Okay, let me throw a coat of paint on this and we'll let it dry for a couple hours and then we'll slap it on there. Okay, it's been a couple hours. Uh, the paint on this is dry. Um, now it's just a matter of putting it on the, um, on the tongue up there. So let's go ahead and do that. See how it looks. It's a nice snug fit, what I like to see. There, that shouldn't move. Now let's go, well, I still gotta put this one in. I want to bring it for a spin after, just to see how the, um, I'll bring it down the hill or something to see if um, the vertical um, angles will play a part in this, which I don't think it will, but I still want to check to make sure. I don't think I'll put this again. Um, since I have this, um, this leg, I didn't have this before when I put this one in. Uh, and like I said before, this was just to protect um, the threads. So if I were to lay this on the ground, it wouldn't uh, damage the threads. But like I, now that I have this leg, I should be okay. All right, time to go test it out. Okay, there was a, a bit of an oversight on my part, um, only for using this uh, this pin, this locking pin here. If you lock this pin here, this, when you turn the tractor this way, 
um, this will hit the, uh, the spring mechanism and it'll pop it out or it'll bend, bend something and, and it won't be good so I guess I can't use this pin um, I might still use this pin but put a washer on it or I might still use the open that I had for now I'll just use the open and if it um, I see it doesn't work um, then I'll go ahead and and put a hole in this one so I can put a, a cotter pin in it and there you go this is um how it looks in the end I think it's gonna be pretty stout it's gonna be pretty sturdy I don't uh, I don't see there being a problem a little disappointed that I can't use that pin but like I said I might be able to to just take out the the spring part and drill a hole in here um, I have a washer that will fit that will fit this um, so I can put a, a hole in here and put a, a cotter pin uh, like I said, I'm going to leave it like that for now. So let's go ahead, go for a drive and see how it performs. All right, well, there you go. It works, I'm happy with it. I'm a little disappointed that I can't use that uh, locking pin, um, but that pin that I have there will work just fine. Um, but besides that, everything worked great. It's gonna be a lot sturdier. It's not gonna bend anymore when I go get wood or whatever, because I always had to, like I said at the start, I always had to pinch it closed because it was getting too wide open. It should be strong and uh, yeah I appreciate you guys watching sticking around with me hanging out in the garage having a good time I hope what was gonna be a simple project turned out to be a little bit bigger than I thought but uh, it's always the case right uh, so now I just gotta clean up that mess but anyways thanks for watching if you like it like it subscribe hope to see you next time see ya